Hi, this is Shelley Latwin from GV Design Canada, and we're back for part seven of our matrix setting series. And today we're going to talk about hammer setting, flush setting, or gypsy setting. They are all same thing, but depending on your region, it may have a different name for it. And basically, it's the stone set into the metal, and then they're burnished over to get this flush set look. Okay, so a couple of things here is your distance. Now, here's what the solder is going to do. You're not going to have the post soldered on there yet. So your setter is going to put this in pitch anyways. And what is pitch? Well, basically your setter will take a dowel, like a round stick, and it'll have this pitch on it which is very easy to melt so they're going to have a glob of this pitch on top of the stick or they might even have this bowl full of the pitch and they'll heat it up they'll sink your piece into it and the pitch sort of molds itself to the piece so it'll act like support but you do want to make sure that your metal is at still thick enough because you don't want it paper thin for the setter. So I've made this chiclet shape a one millimeter thickness, but if I flip over on this one larger stone, I was able to put a jump ring or a torus underneath it to give it more support because it is a larger stone. Now, I laid out these gemstones using gem on surface and in gem on surface you can lower the stones so that the tops of the tables of the stones will be flush with your metal. But on these larger stones I had them protrude up a little bit higher. Again you have to make sure that the girdle is going to be able to be embedded into the metal and if this was pushed down so that it was flush Again, there's not going to be a lot of metal, but again, you could put these little tori. That's how you say more than one torus. You can put a bunch of tori's underneath these stones for support. You also have to make sure that you have an, enough space in between the stones as well. I've heard no less than one millimeter. In some cases here, I have 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Again, talk to your setter. And again, that pitch is going to help support it. You don't want to get too close to the edge. And why is this surface a different color? I extracted it so that we could have a better look at this. And for render purposes, I just went into solids and I filleted the edge again just for render purposes. You would not want to fill at the edge for the setter. You want to leave them as much metal as possible. But you have to open up this hole 100% so that the stone will drop in and then they'll just burnish the metal over top of it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did this torus underneath. And you can see here that my earring is at an angle and so putting a torus underneath here perfectly could be a little bit difficult if I made it here in the center of the viewport and then trying to get it underneath this stone. So if you haven't discovered it yet there is a tool called gem view. Okay, look in the corners here. You can see that there is a ring here. And as, as I'm rotating it around, there's a ring in this corner. And if I double click, you'll notice that there is a ring. And that just helps you know where you are in outer space. Okay, so let's go back to perspective. Okay, so if we want to put a torus right underneath this gemstone, we're going to select it, and then we're going to click on Gem View. Okay, now it doesn't look like anything happened in perspective, except the ring disappeared, and now I've got this pear-shaped gemstone. However, if we go back to the four viewports, if you look here, the stone in these other viewports are right in the center of the viewport. See where your X and Y meet up. And it's completely flat or planar to our construction plane. 
I don't know, whoever came up with that idea really needed a raise that day. Hopefully they got it because it is awesome when you need to build something underneath something or around it or next to its neighbor and you need it flat. Okay, so here's our stone. Now we'll just go into Taurus, center of the Taurus. I'm just going to click on the end O snap of our diamond. Uh, so it says, what's your first diameter? I'm just going to click right about here, and then I'll pull it out. Now, I have inner fixed dimension equals yes. So from your first click, now I can just pull it out to the width that I want. If you do not have fixed inner dimension equals no, then it's almost like it. it's like extrude both sides equals yes. Okay, so fixed inner dimension. It will always stay on until you turn it off. It's, it is not one of those tools in Rhino where it resets itself every time you turn Matrix on and turn it off. So I'm just going to click, and then I'll select this, and I'll lower it down to the depth that I want, maybe put it on purple, and there you go. So there's that second one. Okay, to get out of gem view, make sure nothing is selected, nothing is pink. Then you go ahead and click on gem view again, and voila, you're back. Okay, so as I said, I need to buy somebody a drink for coming up with that idea. The next one beside it is called surface view. So these two really help out with orientating objects to your gems or your surface if they're at a tricky angle. Okay, so that's hammer finish or gypsy set or flush set. Not much in here. You just got to make sure that your stones are at the right depth, that you've got enough space, that your metal thickness is thick enough. And again, on the larger stones, you may want to cheat and put a little torus underneath it so that you're giving some added support. Okay, so that's part seven of our series of matrix settings. Again, I'm Shelley Latwin from GV Design Canada. I have primary, intermediate, and advanced classes available for matrix online, or you can purchase videos as well. You can reach out to me if you want more information. I appreciate that you're listening and that I'm keeping you entertained, and that I'm giving you good stuff for your time sitting here listening to me. And I hope I see you on part eight. Thanks for listening.